A few days ago, I was scrolling on TikTok and came across this dispute by three creators around the conversation of fast fashion. And if you don't know about the dispute, here's a video to show a little bit more context about what I'm talking about. Oh, you thought I wouldn't address these. For those of y'all who need to catch up on the tea, these are the classist clothing crusaders. So he starts by calling us a few names and then he says what we think is fast fashion. Well, what do you mean by that? Because Fast fashion has a definition. And some of these ideas displayed in these videos got me thinking about fast fashion in a deeper context. So in today's video essay, let's talk about fast fashion and fashion's impact on the environment as a whole. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew What It Do. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. Let's start out the video essay with a simple question. What is fast fashion? What do you think about? Is it a particular brand that comes to mind? Is it the way in which a company produces something? Well, one of the best definitions I was able to find on the internet was fast fashion is a term used to describe a highly profitable and exploitive business model on replicating catwalk trends in high fashion designs and mass producing them at a low cost. Oftentimes, this entails exploiting workers in inhumane conditions. And I think I would add to that and simplify it a little bit by saying fast fashion is selling clothing in unprecedented quantities while in disregard to quality, originality, fair wage, and sustainability, and putting profit above all else. Some of the key factors in determining whether or not a brand is a fast fashion brand or not include whether or not that company produces hundreds to thousands of styles that are typically on trend for whatever is popular in the current zeitgeist of culture. Another determining factor that help indicate whether or not a brand or a company is fast fashion is that they typically aren't transparent about where and how their clothing is produced. They sell their clothing at an incredibly low price, making you question how is it possible for the person who made the clothes to acquire a fair wage with such a low price point point. and to me I think about the kind of largest corporate fashion brands that seem to only prioritize profit above all else one of the biggest issues that a lot of people have with fast fashion is its impact on the environment and how it contributes to waste and according to Calperg it is estimated that about 85% of all clothing in the US ends up in landfills and each year every American disposes of on average about 81 pounds of clothes and you multiply 81 pounds on average with the population of the United States which is 332 million and you can see it's a lot of piles of clothes and that's just the waste imagine having to dispose of some of this clothing by burning it and in doing so you release some of the harmful chemicals that are baked into low quality polyester synthetic rayon nylon materials that just aren't healthy for the environment or for the people working in these facilities or for the people living in communities that are relatively close to these facilities and i think it makes sense to a lot of people when you explain it to them that fast fashion is one of the major contributors to all of this waste Waste. because if you buy a $200 sweatshirt or $100 or something of a high quality mark it just you aren't going to be getting rid of it at an 81 pound click that you would be at a fast fashion $10 $3 t-shirt $5 hoodie click now in regards to human rights I think it's a pretty big issue that us in developed nations whether it be United States Canada Europe South Africa developed nations have a privilege of kind of turning a blind eye to the things that go on in the production of a lot of these fast fashion companies there have been numerous reports over the years exploiting some of these very awful tactics that these companies used to make more money while creating products in the fashion industry some of these tactics include child labor inhumane wages trafficking of workers into slave labor and just awful and terrible working conditions to me this is the greatest atrocity when it comes to fast fashion i think waste is also really bad but i think that the fact that we subjugate people from across the world that we never see to creating clothing for us so that we have the convenience of paying for something that's five dollars two dollars three dollars but what they have to go through is literal hell on earth in order to make that clothing it just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem like a system that benefits all. It benefits some because they don't have to pay a price. But at the end of the day, it's, it's just wrong. A human's rights issue. And, and the style of clothing that's made in 2020 goes out of style 
by 2022 when everyone wants a whole different batch of clothing repeating a cycle of waste consumption and exploitation now it's important when i talk about fast fashion not to just blatantly try to guilt you or anybody into thinking that they're a bad person for ever buying or supporting a fast fashion brand ignorance in this kind of example isn't bliss when you don't know something's going on you can't make a truly informed decision when i was a kid a teenager i used to go to the mall i used to buy fast fashion whether it be h m or paxson or whatever brand it was at the time and for me as a high school kid it I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't really have a lot of disposable income. And I wanted to wear and look like and be like the people I idolized or the people I looked up to, whether it be in my actual high school or whether it be celebrities. And the easiest, most attainable way for me was to buy into fast fashion. And in hindsight, if I were to talk to the younger version of myself, I would tell myself to just save my money do with what you have until you can acquire the funds to buy clothing that one represents you as an individual so you can have personal styling come into play and two doesn't do harm to the environment or other people around the world and now that i understand that i mean there's probably no situation maybe one or two situations where i would ever buy into fast fashion if it was an emergency or something like that and there was no other option and the second option was if, if i was literally forced to in whatever capacity i would that's that's that would be the only options but now knowing what i know about the industry knowing what i know about how people matter and how people should be treated and how businesses and uh, profit above all else isn't really what's best for everyone in the system it's hard for me to look at fast fashion in the same way and to me like that's that's my realization maybe you're at a different point in that journey maybe you're at the point in high school where you um, buy fast fashion because you can't afford it, or maybe because you can't afford any of the clothing that is out there maybe you buy fast fashion for that reason or maybe because of the the sizing model in fast fashion we all have to come to the realization on our own and for me personally this is the realization I've come to. I think that kind of summarizes what fast fashion is, what it looks like, and the kind of major problems that revolve around fast fashion companies. The fast fashion model just seems to put wealth on this extreme pedestal. It's kind of in akin to what I learned in business school where the point of a business, they, this way they teach you in business school, is that the point of a business is to increase shareholder wealth and to increase shareholder wealth year in and year out and just continue to have an upward trend of increasing that shareholder wealth. But in reality, if you increase shareholder wealth, if you increase the wealth of your business while harming you know, the planet and other people in the process, at some point it becomes a flawed system. Let me know what you think. How do you justify buying fast fashion? How do you justify not buying fast fashion? What, what goes into the decision process? Is it explicitly monetary? Is it all about, you know, do I have the money or do I not have the money? I need the clothes. I'm going to buy the clothes at the lowest price and the kind of best quality of the fast fashion brands and, and just keep it stepping. Or do you not buy fast fashion as much or because of X, Y, and Z reasons, just let me know down in the comments. And while I do think the way you spend your money does signal to corporations whether or not they need to continue in a certain action or stop in another action, the system didn't necessarily need to be built like this, in which I play, put the majority of the blame and the misfall on the corporations who do this kind of work and exploit the people from across the world into making clothing for american or you know western culture consumers to consume to me an idealized fashion world that is the best for the environment and for the people who make the clothing and for the consumer is you have essentially two types of fashion one type of fashion that is extremely functional for the person who needs clothing for whether it be their job their life or just whatever profession that they choose to do or be in, they need clothing for that. Whether you're someone who works in an office or a, as a construction worker or a painter, like you need clothing and you need equipment in order to do your job maybe the best you can. And then there's another spectrum of people who dress and wear clothing as a way of personal expression, as a way to signify some type of intrinsic, deep, part of themselves that you know they aren't able to do other than wearing clothing and having clothing whether that be with sneakers or loafers or hats and jackets or whatever that may be 
both of these groups, the person who needs it for their livelihood and the person who wants to express themselves, they can be, the, the clothing can be produced in a very ethical and good way for both groups of people without having to exploit others. At least I think it can. Another relatively big problem that I think that the TikTok, almost at Twitter, TikTok beef that I showed you guys at the beginning of this video tries to address, which is the marketing approach for these fast fashion companies and how they portray such a really, they do a great job of portraying a really nice curated clean cut image for the consumer. And that makes it very alluring, but let's talk about it. To sort of dive deeper within the beef that was going on on TikTok, Opal and Mark Boutelier, Boutelier um, two creators, Mark and Opal, which I know and I've you know had relative conversations with them, and Devin, which was another creator on TikTok who avidly promotes fast fashion. Right, that's the that's the reason why this beef was started. Devin promotes fast fashion. Mark and Opal made TikTok videos essentially saying, "Hey man, maybe you shouldn't support fast fashion." They didn't say it like that, right? They kind of said it in a very witty somewhat comical way but Devin took offense to that and he came out with a basically a series to refute the fact that you know supporting fast fashion isn't that bad and that just because I support fast fashion doesn't mean you know I'm a bad person and just because fast fashion exists doesn't mean it's bad and all these kind of different topics that had a lot of layers to it <laughs> I think to best talk about this, I want to show you at least one of Opal or Mark's TikToks, and then I want to show you Devin's response TikToks, which was like a three-part series. I'll try to cut it up to the, to be the most entertaining, but I think it's important for us to kind of go through it and look through it and have a conversation about it. It's very expensive, but now us common folk can join the party thanks to Zara. This is honestly just a terrible take. These big fashion influencers just love to force feed fast fashion on people's faces. And it's really not cool. I 110% understand that, you know, it's not easy for you to just go out and buy a $500 pair of pants. And I would rather not either. However, there are so many different options besides resorting to fast fashion. If you walk out of Zara with that t-shirt for 50 bucks, you are never going to see that $50 ever again. It'll probably start peeling after one or two washes. It's just, it's not worth the investment. If you buy the Ise Miyake pants secondhand instead, you'll probably pay 150 to 200 bucks. You can easily sell them down the line. Unless you poop yourself in them, you will definitely see that money back. And maybe that's still not for you. But go thrift, go shop secondhand, Depop, Grailed, Story Sales, all of that. And honestly, he probably made enough money telling you to go to Zara to buy himself a pair of the real ones. But I would rather just be broke than tell you to do that. Oh! You thought I wouldn't address these. For those of y'all who need to catch up on the tea, these are the classist clothing crusaders. They are leading the charge and shaming people for what they think is fast fashion. But what they fail to realize is I play chess, not checkers. They just got baited into exposing themselves. And so did everybody else that was whining in the comments. I've been making affordable fashion videos on TikTok for almost two years now. And the better than you brigade never cared until now. And why? Because I put y'all on to a luxury trend that they hold sacred. And if it's one thing I know a fashion elitist hates is when regular people can participate in a high-end trend, especially when you didn't spend as much money as they did to do it. They get so mad. So I posted that video knowing that the clothing crybabies could not help but throw a fit. And you would too if you were an insecure gatekeeper. Now I didn't come from a rich family, so all I could afford was Zara, ASOS, or Target. And there is no shame in that. And sure, I can afford some designer now, but A, I'm not always going to buy it because a lot of times you can find the same quality at affordable places. And I'll never turn my back on where I came from or stop making fashion accessible for the everyday guy. I know my lane as a creator. And in fact, this whole thing did inspire me. So I'll make you a deal. I'll speak more about ethical fashion and you get off your high horse. How about that? And before you start commenting about thrifting in Depop, that also isn't accessible for everybody. And I've explained all of that in part three. So if you want to go see it, You can tell there's a bit of animosity in Devin on deck. I think that's his username's at his response to a lot of the pandering and comments and 
things he was getting about fast fashion. He wasn't really enjoying it. If you don't know, Devin on Deck has been known for showcasing Zara or, you know, just different alternatives to some of the more expensive ones. One of the major ones that a lot of people commented on was the Home Plisse Issey Miyake trousers, which are a very staple trouser in the fashion industry, I would say right now. A lot of people know about them, introduced a few years ago, and they're just very popular, right? So what Devin on Deck did is he made a TikTok basically promoting the Zara version versus the Home Plisse Issey Miyake original branded version. And if we look back at our definition of what fast fashion is, it's replicating or taking from larger catwalk or just replicating and taking from other people, other successful items in fashion and just profiting off of making them for a much cheaper and at a much lower quality clip like i said i know mark i know opal and i feel like their criticism of this type of video is valid anytime there's a promotion of fast fashion in disregard for the original creator it kind of puts someone who enjoys the art form in a bad taste it's like if you looked at um or if you had a favorite painting from one of your favorite painters and you love this painting and you talk about it often with your friends and then someone makes a video about how you can basically get a version of this painting that's of a lower quality grade and talks about it as though it's better or that it's a better option than getting the original painting that would kind of put you off and maybe that's not the best analogy but it's the one i got <laughs> and i've shown criticism towards particular creators on tiktok and explained in a video about is tiktok ruining fashion that one of the major kind of flaws of tiktok creators and influencers on tiktok is when they showcase high volume or high amounts of fast fashion in a video whether that be dumping hundreds of clothes onto the floor from h m and going through and showing all the things that you can buy you know for a hundred dollars whatever the price point may be typically those kind of videos they do leave an impression on young buyers and i think that the impression that should be made for a lot of young people trying to understand and get into fashion learn about clothing is that there's gonna be negative repercussions when you buy fast fashion but i think fast fashion has the biggest negative repercussions at this current time and in, in this current age and it's easy to look at devon on deck and say well i wouldn't personally be influenced by him suggesting zara pants over the original but there are millions of people on social media and we all have people who influence us and who we resonate with i have the people who i watch content on whether that be keezy or kyron or or ray and i'm very inspired by them and what they say i i am influenced by it. and maybe i am that for you and there's someone out there who you know takes devon on deck's content they take it to they take it to heart they, t they take it to scripture essentially right and you want to promote some of the things that make the world a better place, right? You don't want to promote things that make people's lives harder or make the world a worse place. At least that's my opinion. Once again, I'm not saying that you can't do what you want to do, but it's just my opinion at the end of the day. I think one of the points that Devin did make that really stood out to me was this idea that high fashion brands and fast fashion brands both contribute harm to the environment and contribute harm to yeah the environment <laughs> let's just say it twice <laughs> it's known that a lot of large fashion houses if there's imperfect leather if their collections don't sell out they will also burn their clothing and their products so that there's a there's scarcity for their items which kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit when you think about some of these brands burning or disposing of the clothing that they make because there's imperfections in it or because of the fact that it has some flaws to it and in that case once again i think think that we're fast fashion the definition of fast fashion where it talks about putting profit and putting wealth above all else you you have to look at some of these fast or these high fashion brands excuse me and think you know how are they not putting profit above all else when they're charging you know thousands of dollars for garments and if they don't sell out then they just dispose of them to keep scarcity, to keep supply and demand at a positive equilibrium for themselves. It's a lot to think about. And I know it's just clothing for some of you guys. And it's like, you know, this is just too dense when it comes to thinking about these things. But 
I think that every industry, not just fashion, has to have its own reckoning for whether or not it contributes positively to the lives of everyone or if it benefits a select few. But I think a lot of influencers, a lot of content creators, a lot of people who make TikToks, YouTube videos, who support fast fashion brands have to come to this reckoning that is this the best thing for everyone it's it's tough because you know they're they're personally benefiting from the zara paycheck that they're getting or the h&m paycheck that they're getting to showcase the products and it's it's difficult like i mean it's a tough question let, let me ask the question to you if you had an opportunity to make let's just say ten thousand dollars if you promoted zara's newest fall winter line are you are you doing that? Are you taking that deal? You know, you're ten thousand dollars richer, or do you have the integrity to say no? I don't want to support something like this. It's not it's not easy because there's a lot of money. You know, there's a lot of money involved, and there's a lot of opportunities for these creators. So I understand that it's not the easiest thing in the world either, but. I think it's something that needs to be done more often than not. Funny enough, I just got a DM as well the other day talking about uh, how Wisdom, you know, the, the famous guy on TikTok, how Wisdom recently promoted an H&M collection, uh, H&M's new conscious line. And I'm always very extremely skeptical when it comes to fast fashion brands and their kind of sustainable lines. I really would have to see behind the curtain to see how sustainable it is, to see the working living conditions. I would love for these companies to show us from beginning to end, from the cotton being grown or the polyester being yarns being, you know, strung out to the actual creation of the garment to then how it gets to the stores and how it's sold and then the recycling. I would love to see it all because the transparency aspect makes it to where it's hard to trust these companies because in the past they put profit above everything else. And what would, why would they change? They're making a boatload of money. You know what I mean? Anyways, like I said, with wisdom, it was kind of shocking to see that he promoted H and M and it was shocking because you know, Wisdom is traditionally known for his ability to put together outfits at a very kind of avant-garde, catwalk, runway. He has these very eccentric looks to him. And so for him to buy into something like H&M or support something like H&M, it just was a little bit left field for a lot of people. I don't know if you've seen it. I'll put it on the screen as well. Hopefully it's still available. I'm not sure if it is, but it's something that also caught my attention. Now I had asked you guys a series of poll questions over the last week. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel and aren't a part of these videos, go ahead and subscribe so you can be a part of these polls that I typically do to help formulate my ideas for this video. And I had asked you guys a couple questions. The first question I asked was, do you buy fast fashion? In which the majority of people in the poll said that they didn't, which was interesting because I think that ton of different people in the audience, there's thousands of people who watch these videos. So it's just interesting to see what the numbers are. It was majority people said no. And in no way do I expect someone who isn't an influencer or doesn't make content on fashion often to buy at the level of an influencer or buy at the level of someone who has high levels of a disposable income. But the next question I asked you guys was what brands on the list, which were Nike, Gap, um, Nike, Gap, Uniqlo, and ASOS, what brands do, do you not consider of those four to be fast fashion? It was a, kind of a trick question because I put the brands in the poll to see what you don't consider fast fast fashion and maybe someone would comment why they don't consider it fast fashion oh boy my camera is about to die hold on guys we'll be back in a second and i did this because i wanted to gain some data on at least what some people think people who follow me people who subscribe to me what you guys think about what brands are fast fashion when you think about fast fashion you obviously think about zara h&m Shein, forever 21 uh uh, blah 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 there's so many others that you probably think about you can spew that you can write down in the comment section but like what do you think about when you think about nike do you think about fast fashion because nike makes a lot of products you know they make a lot of different products of varying levels but the core of nike do you think of fast fashion some people said yes some people said no i don't how can you think nike is fast fashion we're losing the definition of the word what about something like uniqlo Uniqlo is a brand I hear talked about quite often by a lot of people. And I feel like Uniqlo gets a pass on this idea of it being a fast fashion brand. And I kind of want to explore that before we conclude this video. Now, have you ever heard of the brand Uniqlo? 
I'm betting you have because it is one of three of the largest fashion brands, fashion companies in the entire world. I mean, when you have over 2000 stores worldwide, I think you're pretty big and you aren't selling food, you're selling clothes. <laughs> I'll ask this question one more time. Do you consider Uniqlo fast fashion? Write it down in the comment section. If you made it this far, a lot of people have not, so congratulations. But do you think Uniqlo is fast fashion? And if you don't, what do you think separates it from that category? Is it its collaborations or just how the clothes feel in comparison to what other fast fashion companies put out? I myself have a cause unique low collaborated t-shirt from 2019 in my closet right now. And I can say that that shirt is pretty soft. Even just going back to 2019, I probably at this point in time, wouldn't buy that shirt again knowing what i know about uniqlo but i think what a lot of us when we think about uniqlo in our brain it's positioned a little bit different than something like zara or h&m or forever 21 and i do think it has a lot to do with those high level collaborations i mean we're talking about white mountaineering jill saunder and jw anderson it's pretty elite company that uniqlo has been able to work with in order to create clothing for its consumers but with a quick google search you'll quickly find out that a lot of people categorize Uniqlo as fast fashion. And like I said, what defines fast fashion? Profit above all else, the working conditions, the labor, like the wages, how are people paid, and profit above all else. <laughs> but what's weird is that I just can't imagine, or maybe I'm totally off, you know, someone like of the caliber of Jill Saunder collaborating with Uniqlo and having low quality clothing be associated with the Jill Saunders brand. So maybe there is something there with the quality of Uniqlo, but how it's produced, I'm not sure if I have really seen anything that would make me think it's different from the rest. But I could be wrong. What do you think about Uniqlo? Do you shop at Uniqlo often? Is it something that you feel like gets a pass for you for whatever reason? What is that reason? Why does it get that pass? I'm really curious to kind of talk about it down in the comment section. And at the end of the day, my job is not to demonize you or patronize you for the fact that you've bought or buy fast fashion. Like I said, I bought it in the past. And now as I've grown up, I feel like it's an important message to talk about creating or having and supporting brands that create quality clothing that make sure everyone's paid fairly and also create clothes that have that longevity aspect to them that's my prerogative your prerogative may be something completely different and if you have a different prerogative or if you have a different opinion of just fashion as a whole i'm curious to hear it down in the comment section it's really this channel and just youtube in general is about sharing ideas and whether or not that idea is a good one or a bad one is not up for you to determine i'm str i'm sharing an idea hopefully you think it's a good one but if you don't i understand as well like it's fine it's about being able to share what we know what we think in constructive ways to help better each other as people who like and enjoy consuming fashion and as always i'm spreading peace love and positivity in 2021 so that means i'm spreading peace love and positivity to you wherever you are in the world have a wonderful rest of your day We'll see you next time. Peace and Abianto. Yo, what is good, Post Vivid? How y'all doing today, man? How y'all how y'all feeling today? It's December. It's 2021 is almost over. It's no longer going to be out spreading peace, love, and positivity to you in 2021. It's gonna be 2022. You feel me? Here's a fist bump for staying to the end. Bop. Bob, you know how we do it two times. It's kind of our thing, you know. Just, just keep it to yourself, okay? Don't, don't, don't let them know. You know what I'm saying? Actually, comment post vid vid gang if you want to. I appreciate that. So two points in the post vid vid. The first one, are you guys watching or enjoying the shorts? Are the shorts not really your thing? I need some feedback on them post vid vid. I, I'm trying new things in December, seeing what that short game is about i don't know man I'm, I'm trying i'm trying to see if shorts are are valuable or not to the channel if you guys like them or not let me know so my last question for the post vid vid gang and i want to ask you guys this and want you to answer it honestly in three words how would you describe your 2021 i'm trying to get a gauge you guys have a good year bad year was it hard was it growth uh, my three words are short 
growth and work because it felt like it went by so quickly as the years typically do as, as you get older. I felt like there was a lot of growth that happened, whether it be through the channel, whether it be through the podcast or just as a human being, I feel like I grew. And there's been a lot of work behind the scenes, guys, there's a lot of work. So I'm curious to know what your 2021 has been like. Let me know down in the conversation. Oh, let me know down in the comment section. I said that so fast. Post vid vid gang. Appreciate you guys. See you next time. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>